In this video, I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction to R. Uh, you can see on the screen is the basic interface. Um, you can go download this program for free. If you just type R, the letter R, into Google, it'll bring you to a place where you can download the program. And one question you might ask yourself is, why in the world would I ever use R? Well, number one, I just gave you a good reason. It's free. Number two, it's a pretty powerful and pretty intuitive programming language. But if, if you want me to sell you on R, um, you, can, uh, you can ask me in the comments. I'm, I'm going to just proceed as if you want to know how do I read in data into R, how do I get started with R, um, and how, how do I start computing things. That, and that's what R is good at. So, uh, so to start off with, R is command line. Um, so here's the command line interface and say I wanted to define some sort of vector here I could or I, I could just say x equals 1 and you know, x is 1 if I if I ask if I ask R to tell me tell me what x is well I just set it equal to the number 1 and so now R is going to treat that as the number 1 um, just from here here on there's another thing is we can uh, we can define a vector. Simple way to do this is to use the C command. And define a vector one two. So now I wrote over this original vector. You can see now it's a couple of numbers next to each other. It's a it's a vector of numbers one two. And you may be wondering, well, how am I getting these commands? I'm pressing the up arrow, and if you press the up arrow, that will give you the previous command. So if you made a mistake on your previous uh, on your previous command and you wanted to fix that, that really meant to say one, two, and three. And then you can just press the up arrow and sort of modify the command. Um, this this could be pretty useful as you get longer and longer commands. So, and as you can see, we wrote over it again. Uh, we to go back to having x equal to 1, well, that's, uh, we have to actually define it that way again. That's, that's kind of the basic structure of R. Is it, it, thinks of, uh, it thinks of its variables as objects. And these objects have attributes, and we can reference these attributes. We don't want to define a data set like this. We don't want to say, OK, now variable x is let's see the first column was 12.2 the second uh, was uh, first row was 12.2 the third was 13.1 and dot, so on and so forth that would take forever r has a nice command to sort of load pre-stored data let's say that you created a, a comma delimited data set and you want to get that into r well, first things first you need to know where it is but once you know where it is, and we'll specify this now, the read.csv file or command is going to give us um, is going to give us our data set. I, I wrote just sort of the basic structure here. So read.csv is going to read whatever is in between these quotes, read the file wherever that is between those quotes. Hopefully it's going to be a comma delimited file, a CSV, and you presumably have a name for it. You, we know that the file name is insulin. Let's just say that. And it turns out that's not going to be enough unless you're actually in that active directory. And I always found that changing the directory um, when, you're, when you're at the command line, uh, that just reminds me of trying to find Oregon Trail. And it wasn't very much fun. Uh, to do that. So my workaround for this is to define a really short path that I always, where I always save my data. So on my computer, it's under the C drive. And if you want to do the backslash, uh, they actually do the double backslash. And it's in a folder called R, right under C. So I recommend using the shorter path. And that this is, that's what this is called here. This is called the path. I recommend using this shorter path because when when you're sort of working with this and you uh, work with a lot of data sets, you'll just sort of get used to sort of saving your data to this repository of, of data sets. 
and then you can just call it by its name and th that's going to be a lot simpler to do. This command as written will read the data set into R. But we have to do one final thing to actually save the data in a format that will allow us to manipulate it. Let's go to the front of the line. I just pressed home and that brought me to the front of the line. Um, and let's save it as data. So what I'm doing is this command is on the right hand side, it's reading a comma delimited file with a header, a header row. And it's thinking of the headers as names of variables. Let's store this into an object known as data. So let's do that. Uh, given that it didn't give us an error message, it must have worked to do something. So one way to see what it worked to do is to just type the name of that object. And once you do that, it's going to display the object that you were interested in. So let's see what data looks like. Looks like it has two variables. One has got a name week. The other one's got a name insulin. Maybe these are repeated observations on a person and we're measuring um, insulin over time. Now we have our data set sort of right in uh, our grasp. This data object is what's called a data frame in R. It, it can be thought of as a matrix. So we can think of this is the first row. This is the first column. So if I want to know, if I want to get this 2.02 number, I can refer to that as data 1, 1 for first row, first column. That's going to give me 2.02. Uh, but data frames, so that's just something that uh, data frames are a matrix. Uh, they also are a matrix with names. They have names for each column. So if I wanted to just know about the insulin levels, not, not even caring about the week, I could type data and then use this dollar extractor. And this is what's special to a data frame. This dollar extractor allows us to extract a variable that we, we know the variable name. So let's say I want to know data insulin. Well, there it just stripped off the column and gave us all of the numbers in the first column. And it displays it as a row because uh, that's gonna be taking up less vertical space here. If we wanted sort of a sub matrix, so again, I pressed the up arrow to navigate to a previous command. And let's say instead of wanting data uh, one comma one, what I really wanted was the first three observations or better yet, uh, for some context, maybe the first eight observations, these one through eight on insulin, because I knew that those were in the first week. So let's go first eight rows. This colon tells us to go from one to eight and it basically pick out those rows and then also pick out column one. So let's go ahead and return that. Well, you can see that we got the first eight observations on insulin. So that's, that's one thing that we could do. Now let's see if we can do something more exotic. I'm going to uh, re-display the data so we can look at it again. Okay, so here's our data set again. Suppose we wanted to pick out the week. Um, and so uh, we wanted to pick out the, the observations that corresponded to week two. And we just wanted that part of the data set. Well, it sort of seems natural to say, I want the rows where, where the week equals two. And I don't really care about the columns. I'll just give me all of the columns. I'm just going to leave that blank because I don't really know what to do. But instead, just look here in the first argument. Give me all the rows such that week is two. Um, and that's that's what this statement is saying. And row is the first argument to data. Column is the second argument. And what I'm doing is I'm using a logical statement inside of the row argument. And I'm asking R, display these rows. Lo and behold, it displayed the ones that I was interested in seeing. And we can do sort of more exotic things with this too. So let's display the data again. And instead of looking for data where the week was, was equal to two, let's look at data where insulin is bigger than, let's pick an interesting one, 2.4.
Okay, so those are all the observations of our data set uh, for which uh, the insulin level was above 2.4. And so that might be of interest in our application with the data. Uh, another, another command that, that turns out to be pretty interesting and pretty useful is the names command. Suppose you have a data set, has a whole bunch of names, and you, you kind of want to get a feel for what information is in the data set, but you don't want to look at all the observations. Um, suppose it has like 20 names. Uh, what you can do is you can just ask, well, what are the names of this data set? So in our case, uh, the data object is data. And this tells us the names, and it tells us names in the order in which they appear in the data set. So insulin is the first column, weak is the second column, and so forth. Um, we've got a nice short data set, but imagine, and here I'll, I'll read in a, a more complicated data set uh, for my own, my own research. So it's called Resvin Data ESV, and that's going to be our new data file. Now let's look at the names in the data set. We've got 109, 110, 111 names, uh, and each of these is telling us something different about our data set. If you've worked with the data set before, or you had some kind of user's manual to the data set, you might say, well, I really wanted to have this variable here. Oh, that looks like the 13th row. So, or maybe I just want to take a look at games 1907 and lo and behold there it is there's games 1907 it's got a couple of missing observations that's kind of unfortunate but uh, but it's got uh, it's got numbers that range from you know, looks like about one to almost about four in some of these 3.5 got up to the 3.5 there so you can see that we can sort of explore this uh, using use we can explore our data uh, or different attributes of our data uh, using this names command and that can be useful for larger data sets. It wasn't so useful when we had a data set with 24 observations and two names but when we have a data set with uh, 130 observations and names, I guess 110 names, 110 variable names, that's going to be a much more useful technique to sort of getting used to your data set. So sort of in future tutorials, I'm, I'm hoping to, uh, to describe uh, sort of other operations we can do. We can, uh, we can sort of do math with, with these vectors and matrices. Uh, we can do, uh, think, and that's going to be useful when we're, when we're interested in doing something like statistics. Uh, so uh, this is a, this, before you can even do that, you need to know sort of how to work with the data. Um, and this hopefully gave you a nice introduction to that.